And Father, that is our prayer, that your presence would richly fill this house, that your presence would richly fill our lives. Father, that you would minister your word today in power and anointing. Father, that you would touch your servant as he preaches. And Lord God, that you would give to each one of us ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today. And for this, we give you thanks and praise, glory and honor in the sacred name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And all who agreed said together, Amen and Amen. Good morning. Happy New Year. Thank you for being here. It's sort of like the day after Christmas, you know, the, the wrappings are everywhere, the people are scattered, it's wonderful to see you in the house of the Lord. In fact, I, I even saw by uh, Diego's drums over here a residue of, of a snowball from the little elves on Christmas Eve. <laughs> but, uh, but we're so blessed that you're here today, and we're so grateful that 2018 is the year of the Lord, 2018, amen? And... Uh, one of the great blessings that I have in life is, uh, uh, particularly during the holiday season, is to have my, uh, my children around. And uh, this year I have my parents with me. And, uh, and both my sons are, are in service today. My daughter couldn't be here because the littlest one is ill. But uh, so it's a, it's a precious day. I also have my oldest son who pastors in Corona uh, in, in Los Angeles area. And uh, he and his wife and, and my two grandsons, his sons, but they're introduced as my grandsons. But uh, his sons are here. And I think they're in the family room. So I welcome them all. And uh, we're blessed that they're here. And I've asked Joshua if he would uh, preach and bring the word of the Lord to you this morning. And, uh, and he graciously accepted that on his, on his vacation. He's going to preach. And so I'm grateful for that. So would you please welcome my son, Joshua Montgomery, uh, to minister the word. How's everybody doing today? Good. It's good to be here. I want to thank my dad and everybody else for allowing me this opportunity to minister here today. And because I don't get to at my own church, I want to brag on my little brother because he is furthering his ministry by going into the ministry and getting a pastoral license. And I don't get to do that at home. So I want to do that in front of his home church and say how awesome it is that he's furthering along. It's a, it's a big deal because it's not an easy thing, and so I'm very proud of him. If you have your Bible, so turn with me to John chapter 8. And as, as my dad mentioned, uh, Dr. Montgomery mentioned, our churches have partnered together down there in Corona, and, and, and recently we've gone through a time of transition where we really have to be out of our building and so to give you an update, we, uh, we voted unanimously and we'll be going to Corona High School in, starting in February. And so if you could keep us in prayer as we're going into a new area, a new building, and, and it's a new place for us. If you could just keep us in prayer this next month as we transition from one building to the next. And we, we really believe that this is the next stepping stone for what God has for us as we continue to grow down there in Corona. So just keep us in prayer. But as we enter into this new year, tomorrow and really tonight, I'm, I'm reminded of the greatness of God and how great the Lord really is and how God guides each and every one of our days. Every day is ordained by him. It's guided by him. With that in mind, over the last few months, I've been stressing about where are we going to meet as a church for a building. As a senior pastor, that's something that's kind of nerve-wracking. Where, where are we going to be? What are we going to do? You know, I got a whole church that's counting on me to find this building and get this done. And so I told my dad, I've had more gray hair come in in the last couple months than I've ever had before. Now people actually think I'm my age. <laughs> But I've been stressing about that. What are we going to do? And the Lord had to remind me, and he gave me this simple phrase over and over again. I am. I am. I am. This is something I want to share with you. And for this coming year. For today, I am not trying to bring about some deep theological concept that's going to blow your mind away. 
That would not be the easiest thing to do at this church amongst so many doctors, theologians, and pastors. I just want to bring to you a simple message that I believe that the Lord is speaking to us. Amen. That God is speaking to the workers, to the laborers, to the followers, to those that define themselves as Christians. Amen. I believe that the Lord wants us to know who is with us and that he calls himself, I am. So for today, we'll look at a very familiar passage in the book of John, in John 8. And for me personally, I love the book of John. John is one of my favorite books in all of the Bible. The book of John is totally different than the other Gospels. For where Mark's Gospel is written in a manner that would be more like a story for both the illiterate and the literate person to be able to understand... Then you have the Gospel of Matthew, which was written shortly afterwards so that the Jewish people could believe that Jesus was truly the Messiah, the Christ. And then you have Luke, who writes in his Gospel the full details of the stories, as a doctor would. John, on the other hand, preaches. And John was a preacher. He fills what he believes. And he is moved both by life experiences that he had with Christ, but he's also moved by the plight of the human soul. And you see this conviction in John's writings. And so this morning, let's look at John chapter 8, starting at verse 12. From the NIV, it says this. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said that I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The Pharisees challenged him. Here you are, appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid. For I know where I came from and where I'm going. But you have no idea where I come from or where I'm going. You judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one. But if I do judge, my decisions are right, because I'm not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. In your own law, it's written that the testimony of two men is valid. I am one who testifies for myself. My other witness is the Father who sent me. And they asked, where is your Father? You do not know me or my Father, Jesus replied. If you knew me, you would know my Father also. He spoke these words while teaching in the temple area near the place where the offerings were put. Yet no one seized him because this time had not yet come. Verse 21. Once more Jesus said to them, I'm going away and you will look for me and you will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. This made the Jews ask, will he kill himself? Is that why he says, where I go, you cannot come? But he continued. You are from below, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins. If you do not believe that I am the one I claim to be, you will indeed die in your sins. Who are you? They asked. Just what I've been claiming all along, Jesus replied. I have much to say in judgment of you, but he who sent me is reliable. And what I have heard from him I'll tell the world. They did not understand that he was telling them about his father. So Jesus said, when you have lifted up the son of man, then you will know that I am the one I claim to be, that I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the father has taught me. The one who has sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. Even as he spoke, many put their faith in him. Skip down with me now to verse 53. The Pharisees asking Jesus and speaking to him, they say, are you greater than our father Abraham? He died and so did the prophets. Who do you think that you are? Jesus replied, if I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My father whom you claim as your God is the one who glorifies me. Though you do not know him, I know him. If I said I did not, I'd be a liar like you. But I, do not, but I do know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. 
saw it and was glad. You're not 50 years old, the Jew said to him. And you've seen Abraham? I tell you the truth, Jesus answered. Before Abraham was born, I am. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we get into your word today, I pray, Lord God, that you open up our hearts and our minds to hear what you have to say. Holy Spirit, I pray that you come in this place and that you move in this place. And where there is a need, I pray that you meet it today. Lord, let us be reminded how great the I am is. In Jesus' precious and holy name, all God's people said amen. Amen. Amen and amen. The whole point of this chapter that the Apostle John writes is that within this chapter, Jesus reveals who he really is. Jesus shows in this passage that he's more than a prophet, that he's more than just some holy man, that he's more than just a good person or even a priest. He shows that he is the Christ, that Jesus truly is the son of the living God. You see, in this chapter, Jesus separates himself from any other person that's walked on the face of this earth in bodily form. He shows that he is the I am, that he is God. I believe that sometimes as Christians, we get so caught up in life that we just get worn down, that just a little bit of worship on a Sunday morning can get us through the rest of the week. We get so tired that our spiritual life begins to suffer. We don't pray as much as we used to. We don't worship like we used to. We don't read our Bible like we used to. We worry about this bill and this thing going on and that thing going on. Then we have this family issue that happened. This person said this. This person did that. Everything just starts mounting up that we forget about the I am. We forget that we can lean on those everlasting arms. We forget that we can lay our head up against his chest. We forget who can carry us along. My friends, we need to reach back to the I am. We need to look up to him. We need to lift our heads a little higher. We need to look a little deeper. We need to keep on searching and call out to the one who's calling us. Number one in your notes today, the I am is calling to you. The I am is calling to you. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30 in the voice. Jesus speaking says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Put my yoke upon your shoulders. It might appear heavy at first, but it's perfectly fitted to your curves. Learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble of heart. When you are yoked to me, your weary souls will find rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We must listen. We must seek. We must pray. And we have to find the I am who is calling to us. One thing that I've learned in my short years here on earth is that Jesus never says anything unintentionally. He means what he says. That he'll take our burdens. That he'll take our struggles. That he'll help us. The Lord cares for you. The Lord cares for me. The I am cares for us and he doesn't want life and he doesn't want the ministry and he doesn't want anything else to ever be burdensome. He wants to be there for us. He cares more for us than we could ever comprehend. He loves us that much. The I am cares so much about us. I'm always reminded of the scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 10 in the New King James. It says he found him in a desert land and in the wasteland, a howling wilderness. He encircled him. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. I love that term, the apple of his eye. In the Hebrew, that term literally means the little man. 
the little man of his eye. See, when I was younger, I, I would read that and i go, oh, that's pretty cool, the little man of his eye. I didn't really understand that scripture until I had two boys. And I learned how much I love my boys. And I care for my boys. And I'd do anything for my boys. They're my little men. They're my little man. And when they reach up with their hands, I got to pick them up. Even when they're being bratty, I still want to pick them up. Some of the best days that I have is when I can sit down in my chair at home and have both my boys sitting on me watching football. I love that. They're my little men. I believe that it's the same way that I look at my boys. God loves each and every one of us even more than that. And as hard as that is for me to comprehend, to know that God looks at me as his little man. And so when I have a need and I have something that I need God to take care of and I reach up to him and I reach out to him and I say, Lord, help me in this situation. God, help me in this circumstance. I know that my heavenly father, my Abba, my daddy loves me enough that he's going to reach back down and pick me up and care for me and hold me during that time in that situation. My friends, your daddy loves you. Your Abba Father loves you. He wants to hold you. He wants to take care of you. Why? Because he sees you as that little man, that little daughter, that little son. And he wants to help you through those times. Find your rest in him. Allow him to hold you and take care of you. King David would write in Psalm chapter 62, verse 5, in the New Century Version, I find rest in God. Only he gives me hope. The Lord is calling to you. Find your rest in him. Allow him to re-energize you for this new year. Because there's a task at hand. God's calling for us to do a work. Allow him to re-energize you for it. Remember what the I am said to the prophet Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 through 31, in the voice, it says, don't you know? Haven't you heard? The eternal, the everlasting God, the creator of the whole world, never gets tired or weary. His wisdom is beyond understanding. God strengthens the weary and gives vitality to those worn down by the age and care. Young people will get tired. Strapping young men will stumble and fall. But those who trust in the eternal one will regain their strength. They will soar on wings as eagles. They will run never winded, never weary. They will walk never tired, never faint. Number two in your notes for today. The I am is equipping you. The I am is equipping you. We must understand that God not only calls us to a ministry, each and every one of us, but he also gives us the necessary tools to complete the task in which he gives us. God equips us, no matter how big the task may seem, he equips each and every one of us to be able to finish the task. Remember the promise of Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. In the voice, the Apostle Paul writing to the believers in Ephesus would put, Now to the God who can do so many awe-inspiring things, immeasurable things, things greater than we could ask or imagine through the power at work within us. God can do immeasurable things. The I am the one that equips us, can do awe-inspiring things through you. Who is David or Moses? Fast forward to nowadays. Who is Billy Sunday or Billy Graham? Who are any of these guys? Normal people that God equipped to do the task. God equips us 
to be able to do the task that's at hand. In Mark chapter 9, verse 23, in the New Living Translation, Jesus said, anything is possible if a person believes. I've been pastoring now for nine years as a senior pastor. I've been in ministry now for 15 years. I'm always reminded of something that my dad has taught me through the years. Because the ministry can get frustrating at times. And he's always told me that God does not ask us to do something that he will not provide and empower us to do. He does not assign a task without his provision already there. And when he calls us to a task, he will empower us and equip us to complete it. God allows us to be equipped fully to complete that task. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it says, We're God's workmanship, created in Christ to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. When God calls us to a task, he'll empower us and equip us to complete that task. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus said, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Why? Because you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the very ends of the earth. He doesn't say, you will receive power and have good church. You'll receive power and have a revival service. You'll receive power and have camp meeting. He doesn't say those things. He says that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Beloved, God fills us with his Holy Spirit. He equips us by his Holy Spirit so that he could use us for his glory. You will receive power, and you will be my witnesses in Oakland, the Bay Area, California, and the rest of the United States and the world. This is why he equips us. Each and every one of us. Because we all have a role, and we all have a part in the kingdom of God. He doesn't call pastors to do all the work. Thank the Lord. He doesn't call worship leaders, hey, we're going to do worship, you're going to attract everybody to church, so you better be good every Sunday. He doesn't say, oh, well, we better have the best teachers and trainers. We better have the best preachers. We better have the best youth pastor. Oh, our children's ministry better be top notch. Each of us have a task. Each of us have a role. Each and every one of you whether you're an intercessor or you help clean the church, you have a role in the church and God has equipped you with the talents and the giftings to fulfill the role in which he's given to you. Go forth in what he's equipped you to do and see how much more he uses you. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20 through 21 in the Amplified It says, now may the God of peace, a source of serenity and spiritual well-being, who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood that sealed and ratified the eternal covenant. Verse 21, equip you with every good thing to carry out his will and strengthen you, making you complete and perfect as you ought to be, accomplishing in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Number three, the I am is sending you. The I am is sending you. John chapter 20, verse 21 and 22. In the NIV says again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. One thing that we have to realize is that we are called. We are equipped. And we are to be sent. But my friends, please realize something today also. You are not called by a denomination. You are not called by a church. You are not called by a pastor. You are called by the I am. And if the I am has called you, then you need to step up and step out and go forward in what he's called you to do. 
Not only does the I am say that I've called you, I've equipped you, but I'm sending you. I'm putting you forth for what I have in store. He also takes it a further step. He didn't say, I'm sending you, I've kind of equipped you. Good luck. Thank God for that. Because I know how, how far Josh can go on his own. And it's not very far. I know how to put gas in the car and check the oil. That's about it. I can't do much on my own. Amen. But he's sending us. Yes. Look at John 20, verse 20 through 23. says, Jesus said, may each of you be at peace. As he was speaking, he revealed the wounds in his hands and his side. The disciples began to celebrate as it sank in that they were really seeing the Lord. Jesus speaking, I give you the gift of peace. In the same way the Father sent me, I am now sending you. Now he drew close enough to each of them that they could feel his breath. He breathed on them. Jesus said, welcome the Holy Spirit of the living God. You now have the mantle of God's forgiveness. As you go, you're able to share the life-giving power to forgive sins or to withhold forgiveness. My friends, he breathed on them. The breath of God breathed on the disciples. This is the same breath of God that spoke life into existence. This is the same breath of God that got down into the mud, into the mire, and breathed life into the nostrils of Adam. This is the breath of God that breathed into the mighty army before the eyes of Ezekiel. This is the breath of God that told the waves and the wind to be still. This is the breath of God that cast out demons. The breath of God that brought sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, and restoration to the broken heart. It is the breath of God that caused the dead to rise and called call Lazarus forth from the grave. The breath of God that took his final breath there on Calgary, but breathed once more on resurrection day. It was the breath of God that breathed on his disciples, but also came down like a rushing wind in the book of Acts. It's the breath of God that has called you to go wherever, whenever, and to whom ever. Rest assured that the I am has sent you. The I am has empowered you. And the I am will equip you. And he will continue to be with you on this journey. Matthew chapter 10 verse 7 and 8. Jesus said as you go preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse those that have leprosy. Drive out demons. Freely as you've received. Freely give. Why? Because number four. The I am is always with you. God is always with you. Jesse if you'll come up. The I am is always with you. The writer of Hebrews would write in Hebrews 13, verse 5, in the Amplified, He, God himself, has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake you, nor let you down. Relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. Even in your loneliest times, even in your loneliest hour, the I am is there. God is there. No matter what you've been through in life, and no matter what you're currently going through today, the I am is with you. God is with you. The I am. Jesus himself said that I am the bread of life. John 6, 35. That means that he is the one that provides for us. Jesus said that I am the light of the world. John 9, 5. His glory lights our path. He said that I am the door for the sheep. John 10, 7. He is the one that protects us. 
He said that I am the good shepherd. John 10, 11. He's the one who loves us and he guides us. Jesus said that I am the resurrection and the life. John eleven twenty five. 25. He's our hope both for today and tomorrow. In him, we will live forever and ever and ever. Jesus said that I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. John 14, 6. My friends, he is our salvation. And Jesus said that I am the true vine. John 15, 1. He and he alone is our source of life. In Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6, it says, so be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic before them. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. I believe that God is going to do some unbelievable things through what we're going to do as churches. And he'll never fail us. He'll never abandon us. And he's going to be with us every step of the way. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 in the voice. says this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Never be afraid or discouraged. Because I am your God. The eternal one. And I will remain with you wherever you go. Jesus said. In Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. That all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always. Always. To the very end of the age. Aren't you glad that God is with us always? In him we can accomplish so much. Remember. He's calling you to find rest in him. Don't let the stresses of today bog you down so much. That you, you lose your sight. On the cross. Allow God to equip you because he wants to equip you. He wants to prepare you for the great things as he sends you. As he sends you, be willing to go wherever, whenever, and to whomever. I had to learn that when I was young. To be willing to go. And I thank God that he taught me that. I've been able to go more places and do more things than I've ever dreamed. Because I said, God, what do you have? Watch as he blows your mind what he does in your life. When you say, God, here am I. As Isaiah said in Isaiah 6, hey, here am I, send me. Use me. Use me. And remember though, through your journey in life, God's with you. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. He never abandons you. But he's right there to hold you, to help you, to guide you, to strengthen you. And to prepare you for the next steps in your journey. So hold on to him as he holds on to you. Amen. Will you stand with me? First off, with every head bowed and every eye closed right now.
with no one looking around. If you're in this place today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, don't leave here without him because he's calling to you. If that's you and you want to know the Lord as your personal Savior, you want to know this I am. But no one looking around, if that's you, just between you and the Lord, will you raise your hand where you're at? And God will meet you today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for great grace and great mercy. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Anyone else? Church will repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner. And today, I accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of my life. Jesus, come into my life. Make me whole and help me to become all that you've called me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. If there's any of you that are in here today, you say, you know what, I need to find my rest in him. I'm allowing the life my life just to bring me down too much I need to find rest in Christ maybe that's you maybe you're in here today and you say you know what pastor I want to be equipped with what God has I want that anointing of the Lord his Holy Spirit to come upon me like never before so I can do what he's called me to do maybe that's you Maybe you're in here and you say, I've struggled when the Lord has called me to go. I fought him on it. I haven't been willing. Maybe that's just to a neighbor or a family friend or a family member. Or maybe it's a mission trip. Maybe that's you. Maybe you're in here today and you just want to know that the I am is always with you. And the enemy keeps telling you that he's not. And you need to tell him where to go to get behind you because the I am is with you. If any of these things are you, you need to find your rest in him. You need to be equipped by him. You need to go where he sends you to. Or you just need to know that the I am is always with you. If you're willing to step down and come to this altar, I just want to pray with you for that. And I want to pray that God meets you right where your need is today. So as Jesse begins to lead us in worship, we just come down here and we'll pray together today in Jesus' name.